Oh, well, hi everybody. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying to you once again, just look at all that stuff. I have another thrift haul to show you, so let's see what I found. Uh, I actually was driving around in South Philly, well actually not South Philly, in uh, what you would call one of the river wards in North Philly. And one of the old churches that's defunct was being convert is being converted into like condo space. And they were pulling stuff out. There was a lot of stuff out on the street. And part of the old console of the organ was out on the street. And yep, you bet. I stopped, pulled a screwdriver out of my car, and spent about 40 minutes. And I removed every single one of these tabs from the uh, console, which was in lousy shape. It, was, it couldn't be restored. There wasn't really anything you could do with it. It was going to be trashed. So I pulled these off. Um, so these are organ stops to a pipe organ. The organ was probably from the 19 turn of the century. And these look like they're made of ivory or they could be celluloid. And these are the uh, stops that would turn different ranks of pipes off and on. So these are all uh, names of pipe organ stops, as I just said. And I don't know how many there are. There's just probably 50 of them, maybe a little bit more than that. And I, see, I took all the little screws out. Not sure what I'm going to do with these, um, but I'm going to sell them. You know, a musician could maybe make a necklace out of them or some kind of a craft project or somebody might buy them if they're actually restoring a pipe organ. Um, Too hot to handle. I thought it was kind of cute. It looks like just boxer shorts. It's not marked on the bottom. So I hadn't seen that before. So I'll see maybe if I can get six or eight bucks for it. I'm not really sure about that. These two mugs over here um, are actually, uh, you can see Campbell Soup Company and guess who made them? Oops, upside down. Turn them around. Corning. Genuine porcelain corning. Campbell Soup Company of Camden, New Jersey, which is right across the river from where I am speaking at the moment. Uh, they don't make the soup there anymore, but the uh, corporate headquarters is still in Camden, New Jersey. These mugs were a buck each, and they actually sell for between five and six dollars online. So I'm going to try to get twelve dollars for the pair. Here is an Art Deco shot glass. It was only one, it was 25 cents. It's just so typical from the 19, early, right around 1930. Love it, probably gonna keep that and use it as like a toothpick holder. That's a piece of, uh, well, yes. You did see four of these in my last thrift haul video, but they were in the Harvest Gold color. This set is in the slightly harder to find green, and I actually just sold the other set. Um, and I think, yeah, they were in last night's Guess What Sold on eBay uh, video. So uh, you can tune back in and see that. But I had four of these, Indiana Glass Company, 1960s Carnival Glass. The blue you see all the time. Next comes the Harvest Gold, and then the green I think is a little bit harder to find. Um, I could probably get about five bucks each for these. So we'll see if we can get 20 bucks for the set of four of them. Does this look old to you? Does it look like it's from the 19... 20s because of that pattern and everything well it's not um, it is from probably the mid 60s uh, late 50s into the 60s they were still making carnival glass in the 50s and the 60s Th this is the 60s era and so is this I can tell the difference just by looking at the the way the light shines in my opinion, the, the newer carnival glass, or what I'll call the second generation carnival glass, has more of a, what I would say, like a, a gasoline on water kind of a look. Uh, it's hard for me to explain, but there's just something about the iridescence on the newer carnival glass that doesn't look the same as the, the glass that was made in the 1920s. Nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying that you can, in my opinion, you can always tell the difference because of it just has that look. But really cool, don't drop it. it. If we turn it over, we'll see it's met. All right, it is marked. 
Let's see. You see that? The I and the G. The old pieces weren't marked like that. That's the Imperial Glass Company. And they refer to this pattern as, I don't remember. Something like starburst and gothic arch and starburst. I've even seen oct octagon, which makes no sense to me, but there are eight uh, points to the top of it. Those are from uh, 1977. I was 10 years old. And so yeah, but th these go for mm, about 10 bucks each. And then over here, I picked up a bottle that says Cranberry, New Jersey, which is a beautiful little town near Princeton. Uh, it's a medicine bottle, either medicine or some kind of liqueur or who knows what, but it's right around the turn of the century, 1890s, 1900. Probably would sell to somebody in Cranberry, New Jersey, who collects old glass. This was a dollar. I might be able to get five bucks for it. Not a lot of value with that. These I just picked up. These are two Depression Era spice jars. They have lids. They're not shakers. And these are the original lids. If somebody wants to take an SOS pad to them, go for it. I'm leaving them just like they are. Uh, the lids do screw on and off. They're not marked. So we don't know who made them. Nothing on the bottom. And I didn't do any research on these, but they have a... Uh, they're kind of wet on the inside because I did wash them. Oh, that lid does want to come off. Okay, there. Uh, I like the rib effect to it. Very 1930s. And they're, when these were made, they probably had paper labels here that said what it contained. Or you might have been able to buy the labels and put them on yourself. I don't know. So, kind of neat to find these, uh, and they're not shakers. So, I'm going to try to get between $12 and $15 for the pair of those from the 1930s. And this is, um, I paid $2 for it. It's a 1930s. G this piece I think I'm going to keep looks really would it would look really nice in the fall you know with like candy corns in it or something like that i don't know all right here's a 1960s vase it's unmarked don't know who made it doesn't matter it's got that classic 60s look with the uh little gold speckles on it and i have i'm certain in this turquoise and in this form i will have no problem selling that for at least 20 bucks this was one dollar and this actually paid five bucks for that these i paid a dollar each and i already told you what i think i can get for them here are some more character glasses back here these are two that i didn't have before uh these are still that the garfield 19 late 70s mcdonald's um i've already started selling them i sold my first one this week for what did i sell it for six or six $7.99? I honestly can't remember. I shipped it out already, um, but it is in last night's thrift video, or guess what sold on eBay video, if you want to tune into that. These McDonald's McDonald's mugs back here sell for close to $10 each. There were, I think, six or eight of them in the series, but here we have Captain Crook, Ronald McDonald, the Grimace, and the uh, Mayor Cheeseburger or mayor, mayor cheese and I'm gonna not discuss this too much at the moment because I'm gonna go as soon as I'm finished with this thrift haul, thrift haul uh, I'm gonna put this with some other uh, jadeite glass and do a quick discussion about Fenton jade and jade and clam broth glass from the 1920s and 30s so stay tuned for that it's a cliffhanger you know I went into the shop uh, no, I was at a flea market and then I was walking and there was this indoor place and I had my sunglasses on, which are prescription, but I can't read with them. I can only drive with them. So when I got into the place, I didn't have my eyeglasses and I couldn't read, read this. It felt like 
it felt like corning. It kind of had a corning feel to it and look to it. And I know some of you are already saying, oh, I bet I know what that is. Well, I couldn't tell it until I got back to the car and put my glasses on. Uh, it's not corning. It's that French stuff. And I can't... There we go. Arc. Wait. Yeah, France. Um, Arc Arcopal? Arcopal? Arcopal. I don't know. Uh, French. And the pattern or the style is called gastronomie. G-A-S-T-R-O-N-O-M-I-E. Gastronome. Gastronome. Gastronomie? Gastronome. It's a funny name for a pattern of teacups, but these were 50 cents each and they're all in super great condition. These are not old again. I think this stuff was made in the 1980s. I don't know what they sell for, but they're really nice. They have a nice elegant look to them and we'll see what happens. Um, they're just real cool. And then over here is a 1940s. I'll say this was made sometime between late 30s, early 40s. It's a very large, what I would call a living room uh, lamp. Somebody put this awful big industrial cord on it. I will replace that and get rid of that awful plastic plug. But this is uh, onyx, green onyx. And there's nothing wrong with it. Really nice lamp, early 40s. Nice old socket, a harp. This will look really nice with a big lampshade. And then I found this really beautiful piece of art glass. Uh, it is, um, it's a piece of art glass. It's not stretch, it's iridescent, but it doesn't have that stretch effect on it. So it wasn't refired with uh, the chemical to make it have that onion skin. It just has the, the iridescence on it. It's completely unsigned. There's, there are no marks on it at all. So this may be a this may be a contemporary piece. If it is, that's fine. It's still it's a beautiful piece, and I bought it with the intent to keep it, not to sell it. And this was just under three dollars. So just a really beautiful. I'm going to actually end up taking this to uh, someone that I know who's really who's a, actually uh, an art class expert. And they're going to be able to tell me exactly what it is. So. So don't change that dial because in just a second, I'm going to tell you about this beautiful piece of Fenton. All right, stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, so as promised, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more in depth about this piece of Fenton that I picked up. Uh, this is a small collection of mine. As I said before, I don't really collect anything, uh, <laughs> but I like this color a lot and I like Fenton and so this is probably as big as my collection of Fenton art glass is going to get. Uh, but let me zoom in and I'll talk to you a little bit more about it. So this is the piece that you just saw in my thrift haul video. Uh, a Fenton three-footed bowl, three tiny little feet on the bottom and it's sometimes called, sometimes referred to as uh, ha having rings as you can see. This is from the 1930s um, and uh, this particular color is often referred to by collectors as clam broth, uh, which is different from the jadeite or the jade rather you see in the back. So these two pieces would be referred to as clam broth and then these three pieces in the back are really what's called jade, jadeite. I'm sorry, jade. It's all made by Fenton Art Glass Company, and this is all original glass from the mid-20s into the early 30s. Now, I think it was 1980 when they had their uh, 75th anniversary. They started uh, for about six months or so. They reproduced some of their uh, clam broth glass, but it will always be marked on the bottom with an oval and the word Fenton. This piece, as you can see, is completely unsigned on the bottom. And uh, so we know this is one of the old pieces. Also, this is not one of the ones that was reproduced in 1980. Referred to as clam broth because it is 
transparent, semi-transparent. You you can see my fingers through it, but it kind of has a um, well a milky kind of a clam brothy kind of color to it. Uh, even though it's green. Now, clam broth can be in different colors. It can be white, it can be pink, but this would be also sometimes referred to as green uh, clam broth. So this is a, a bonbon. This is also a candy dish, also uh, Fenton. These are really nice examples. Also completely unsigned on the bottom. This is one of the early pieces. And if I move these two aside just a second we'll zoom in and let you kind of see the difference um, the jade glass and Fenton didn't call it jadeite it was called jade it's a deeper darker green which may not show up in this video because of the way the light is coming in the window but this is a, uh, a much deeper uh, green color than the clam broth they look nice together when you display them it's just a little bit of a different color. These candlesticks, uh, I, I believe this particular mold was introduced in uh, sometime in the very early 20s and then they continued to make this through the into the early 30s in different colors, but uh, the jade color is very desirable. And these candlesticks, well, <laughs> 10 or 15 years ago, they were worth about a hundred bucks. You can pick these up now for about fifty dollars a pair. The price has gone down. There just aren't as many collectors of this stuff, um, but these are not for sale. And then over here is a also from the twenties. This is a typical form, candy dish form in the twenties. Very popular form. Very popular design. Lots of glass companies made these covered candy dishes, uh, and this one is also Fenton. And you can see there's no no mark on the bottom. So that's a covered candy dish. And again, as I said, you can pick these up now for about 50 bucks. This one you could probably pick up for about 20. And the little bonbon dish probably now sells for about $10. And this ruffled candy dish uh, also sells for maybe 15 to $20. So the value has gone down, but that's why you should collect what you love. I didn't collect these because I wanted to resell them and make money on them. I collected them because it's beautiful glass. I like the color and it stands out really well next to uh, the dark colors here on the fireplace. Okay, so thanks for watching. Fenton Art Glass. By the way, the Fenton Company, uh, I believe it was 2011, they stopped producing Fenton Glass and the factories were to be torn down and the ground was being sold to the county in West Virginia and they were supposed to be building an elementary school on it. So let me go online, see what I can find out, and I'll post a link below for you if you're interested in learning more about the history of Fenton. It's beautiful glass. So I also picked up this photograph. It's an 8x10 and it's from the 1920s. It's hand tinted. They would take these photographs and then uh, someone would actually take watercolor and hand tint it. It's really beautifully done. It's in a really nice old frame. Um, I certainly don't need photographs from somebody else's family. I've got enough old photographs of my own. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I mean, I'm gonna sell it, but uh, we need to give her a name. I think she looks like a Muriel. So she just has that Muriel kind of a look. If you have a particular name, if you think you can name her, what do you think her name should be? Why don't you put her name in the comment below? I'd love to know. I, I like Muriel. I think she looks like, I think she was an elementary school librarian. She never married. She had lots of cats and ferns and her name was Muriel. What do you think? You got a name? Thanks for watching. It's Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop once again saying so long for now.